and I'm doing it for my daughter. We got Ah Yep with 40 Australian dollars. Hi, Sam. I have a good job that I enjoy with a decent salary of 100K. Good for you! I have 50K savings that I want to turn into real money. Burn it! What are your thoughts on ETFs or any other... Fuck them! Or any other ideas to put my money... I 401K! I already have 10K in Bitcoin. Get the money when you're 900 years old! Um, I cannot, I don't think I can give, I think it's probably, I can't give financial advice. Yeah. Should we change the chat to only hat? All financial advice? No. I will say, listen, I'll say this. I say, um, I put, I will continue, I've put and I'll continue to put all my money into Bitcoin. Bitcoin. And, um, I think conceptually I am, uh, the important things are. Michael Saylor talking about Amazon stock. I'm just going to, I'm just going to, I'll just briefly encapsulate. Here we go, right here. Michael Saylor talks about Apple stock in 2012. And his point, what he's talking about, he's, he's talking about um, uh, stocks, companies, technologies, whatever, where there's S-curve adoption. And what S-curve adoption is, you start down here at zero, it's very, it stays very close to zero. It's, it's almost nothing. There's almost no activity. You've got a little bit of activity with early adopters. And then once the thing is like, um, once the thing is proven, whatever, you have this growth that looks like exponential growth. And then what it does is at the top, it tapers off. That's why, that's why it's called an S curve like this. It tapers off once the niche has been filled. Like once everybody who could possibly ever own an iPhone has an iPhone your niche has been filled and yes there's like a billion people in Africa who don't have iPhones but it's like if we were to um, like the, di the distance between right now and everybody in Africa having an iPhone that distance time wise and also the amount of like income that that would create is not really it's it's not the same as Apple's run up from from um, the beginning to now which, uh, and what Michael Saylor talks about a lot is in those early phases, um, I mean, right, so right now, Michael Saylor, he's like, a, he's like a Bitcoin evangelist, which I don't, I'm not saying to go watch his Bitcoin videos. His videos of him prior to Bitcoin, talking about Apple, Amazon, tech investing, et cetera, are really worth looking into if you wanna know about where you might wanna put your money, okay? His non-Bitcoin videos are very illuminating as well. Okay, I'll say that. Uh, and um, what people, when people uh, look at, when people were looking at Amazon stock in 2009 or whatever, they were looking at Apple stock in 2012, they were looking at Bitcoin now and a few years ago, they were looking, to, they were looking at this volatility. And um, volatility, like, if the... If the product is, a, is an obvious, what Peter Thiel calls a zero to one product, like it's a zero to one means zero, there's none of it in the world. One is the invention of the first iteration of it in the world. And like globalism is focused on going from one to a hundred, taking, taking the iPhone that already exists and duplicating, duplicating it a hundred times so that everybody in China can have one. That's one to, that's one to 100, that's globalism. But like actual innovation is zero to one, is thinking of where there's, um, I'm sorry for rambling with this, whatever, you know, this is what you're interested in. Anyway, anyway um, the, um, what was I saying? Oh yeah, so going from when there's, where there's nothing to where there's something, that's, that's where the actual innovation takes place. And when that innovation happens, when you go from zero to one, there's always, volatility because the market is trying to figure out like how legit the thing is what it's worth etc but there's a time there's a there's a period where the th to to insiders and even to laymen even even to laymen with um enough kind of like layman knowledge in various fields to to piece together the truth there's a period where it's obvious there is a clear category winner but the market is still 
fucking around trying to figure out who the clear category winner is. But to anybody who knows how a fucking computer works, it's obvious that the iPod beats the Zune. And you'd have to be, you'd have to have a bit an MBA and be a professional investor to be retarded enough to think that the Zune beats the iPod. Um, and that's where there's that's where there's volatility. And what the problem with volatility is people try to people try to time the volatility and they think they're geniuses. Like people look at the Bitcoin, the price of Bitcoin or Apple stock or whatever, and they say. Um, you know, whatever Apple stock was at, let's see, Apple stock 2010. Is there a chart for this? So people will be like, they'll be like right here, 280, and they'll be using their past history. They'll be, they'll be like, they'll see that it's at an all time high and they'll just go like, it's almost like a fucking, it's, it's uh, the way a fruit vendor looks at, the way things should be priced. Mm -hmm. Like this, these plums, you're telling me $45 for a plum? This doesn't make sense. Apple stock, 280, but it was 200 a year ago. It was only 200 a year ago. Why would it be 280? And then, I mean, now the, the, the market cap, so after multiple splits, if you had invested in 2010, uh, Apple stock in 2010, calculate what it's worth, or Apple market cap 2010. So you would have 10xed your market cap now. Yeah, so if you, if you, had, just, if you had just bought in 2010 when it was at uh, the market cap was 300 billion. Now the market cap is 3 trillion. You would have 10 x your money. But it's hard to do that at the time when the stock's going like this and you're thinking, oh, I'll buy. Oh, this, is, this is not interesting to people. Uh, what was the question? Uh, uh, oh, what should he do with his money? I can't give you financial advice. All my money goes directly into Bitcoin. Yep. Um, and the other person that I think is conceptually correct a lot of the time is um, the sort of the meme, the meme lady, Kathy Wood, um, and her her notion, which I don't think has has yet to to play uh, play out yet. I don't know how people who've bought Ark Invest have done, but her idea is that the there are five um, revolutionary technologies, and that the synergy between these five revolutionary technologies will be will have a sort of magnitude of it as the, the, along the same lines as, as the previous, the last time there was a synergy of revolutionary technologies, which would have been like steam engine, rail, rail transport, and whatever. Mm -hmm. um, if you watch her videos about uh, Kathy Wood's technologies. But, um, yeah, you're going to have to search for it. But that's, that's her idea, is that... Um, AI, gene, gene editing, blockchain, and uh, there's, there's two other things that um, she talks about that are that this, the synergy between these things is going to absorb a lot of money, uh, which I think is conceptually makes sense to me, although her, I don't think her ARK Invest ETF is doing well, but I haven't checked in a year, so I don't know.